Hi, I'm Mark Cleggorn. Welcome to the Photographer Academy. And today we're talking about bridal boudoir. Um, in this session, um, ideas, we're looking at uh, some posing flow, some kind of variety that you can work with. Um, and we're going to be talking about uh, standing, kneeling and laying down images. I would say, though, if you're planning to shoot bridal boudoir on the actual wedding day itself, you concentrate on more of a stood or a sat or both um, rather than the laying down. The main reason in that is that the hairdressers and the kind of the uh, dresses and everything else are going to spend a lot of time doing bride's hair and you're really going to get in the way. Uh, and there's a very good chance that if you get into a laying down pose in some of the images, you're going to actually need more finishing of the hair, which you could make things uh, delayed more. Um, if you are going to try and do more boudoir bri uh, bridal on the actual day itself, I would suggest that... Uh, explain to the uh, the hairdressers fully what you're trying to achieve and so that you can grab five ten minutes before perfection is done and then you can hand them back over uh, to the actual finishers you know the hairdressers uh, for bride to actually find uh, finalize and she can get ready you know the last thing we want to do is is create more stress more anxiety because of time actually on the day and things really so if you were to concentrate on these two we'll talk about these later and things Okay, so um, as a rule, um, we would kind of talk about standing, kneeling and laying down in that kind of order. Um, but if we were pretty much looking at boudoir um, bridal photography as a separate part of the wedding day, so in other words, you know, six weeks prior or, or more even, um, we've got a lot more kind of uh, things that we can be doing. Many brides go through a kind of pre-makeup and a pre-hair kind of testing and if you can basically combine those together with time in your diary so you can actually do a boudoir bridal as well I mean you can really knock it out of the park in as far as variety is concerned you can build this uh, woman's co uh, confidence up like she's never had before and even though these images might not appear in the bridal proofing part it's a great gift for her to actually hand over to her husband on the day or that night um, or even a little bit of a, te a teaser on the morning of the actual wedding with uh, an app or whatever it would be. Um, but the main thing for here is what we can do prior to the wedding day is much more compared to the wedding day itself without real-time disruption. So as I like to work in boudoir, uh, more of the laying down or kneeling first, I'm going to switch these around, in fact, okay? So we're going to be concentrating, uh, getting going, uh, kneeling down on the bed, then laying down on the bed, then to a stood-up position, and perhaps coming back to the laying down as well. There's another key thing that I should talk, uh, talk about is that often the veil that I use in the majority of the photography is not the actual bridal veil. The tiara is, um, and for kneeling or stood-up shots, we can use her veil. That is actually the one for the wedding day itself. Um, but we used to carry a large variety of veils anyway that we could kind of say which is similar to yours, and we can kind of work from that. And the reason being in that is I really don't want to get the veil increase. So even before we get to the po uh, the po posing, what I'm trying to do is minimise any kind of uh, uh, problems or worry about the bride. She might get a little bit anxious about the kind of the veil and get it in uh, increased, whatever. Okay, so the first image, uh, kneeling shot, uh, it's usually done, as you can see here, with the body at the two-thirds and turned away from camera position. All the light is coming in from behind. Um, if I measured the light from the nose to the light source, I then usually open up by a stop. Um, and the reason being that I get this lovely halo effect, this lovely bleached high-key kind of wraparound light and if I just add a kind of a stood up uh, reflector a white reflect a reflector that's going to be added into the scene as well and things really this pose uh, pretty easy to do uh, knees apart uh, feet lightly towards each other and um, pretty much it's a faceless image which uh, refers to not having to look at camera, uh, camera. Uh, and by doing that of course you can get a little bit of variety. I usually start with the um, bride being kind of shown to hold the veil um, or when she goes to touch the the bra strap or whatever it is, it's the thumb and two fingers in the middle. And she does that throughout the whole session. That can give me better hands than with no instruction. So by here, just uh, grab a little bottom of the veil, bring it in towards the actual middle of the tummy, uh, and then we'll actually shoot from there. 
Next image then, uh, she can shuffle around and just turn around towards me, exactly the same exposure. The only problem that you have if she was to look at you is that exposure, um, because obviously then we've got to make the lighting onto the face better than uh, just allowing the natural light to reflect and form. When a subject is looking at camera position rather than voyeur, uh, this faceless kind of look, um, then we can basically, we've got to make sure we, we, we create beautiful light actually onto the face and things really. So because she's looking down and off towards the side here, we don't need to actually worry about the light on the face. We can continue with the flow. So again, just a slight, a slight little turn around towards camera position, still two thirds again. It's better for the female figure, most bodies in fact, including a big guy like me. <laughs> um, that forward knee, the knee closest to camera should be slightly forward of the back knee. And then as far as the hands are concerned, remember trying to show the sides of the hands rather than the back of the hand. The back of the hand is pretty much the worst part we're going to see because that's going to have any vein in. It's, all, it's almost the same size of the face when you open up the fing uh, the fingers fully, okay? So just here. So be aware of that. So uh, the inside of the hand is okay because if we've taught the bride as far as the middle finger pinch, as it were, um, then we're, we're going to get a, a minimized hand style in anyway. So um, the, key, the key thing is here, arms out to the side, try and bend the elbows. Uh, there was something that was said to me very early on in my career in posing, which was, if it bends, you bend it. So in other words, an elbow, a wrist, uh, um, a finger, ev everything uh, needs to actually have a slight little kink to it. The straighter the arm, the more kind of um, angular or stressed it would look and things. So at this point, you can see uh, the veiling is fully over the face because it's more of uh, an impression, a voyeur kind of style uh, than it is a portrait. So uh, the key thing is here, that knee forward of the groin, just that little bit more. Detail shots is important as well. And if you can kind of finish the pose in the fuller length, you'll always be able to go in closer and kind of uh, get in much tighter on the image as well. Don't, don't be afraid, especially if you're using the technique I was on about where um, you're overexposing the kind of image to get this pastel high hikey white backlight effect. Don't be afraid when you're getting in close to kind of open up the exposure even by another half a stop and things really, it can really kind of show off. If, if you think about it, most brides are going to have um, some detailed underwear in some kind. Even if a bride is braless actually on the day, they're, they're usually going to be using some body shaping um, to kind of give control. And that's usually going to be the part with detail on. If we do have a bride um, who's not wearing a bra actually on the day because of the dress style, and perhaps the um, boob control is built into the actual dress itself, then uh, it's up to them whether they're going to actually bring in something else to wear as well, or we're going to just use one of the hands to kind of cup across the body the whole time, like in a standard implied topless image and things. But uh, again, a covered boob is a lot easier to work uh, to work with. So you can see here how that front knee is slightly forward of the back knee as well. The more forward that knee is pushed, yeah, the more the groin is going to hide. If you think about um, when we're doing classical nude, we usually actually use that for uh, the forward leg or the forward foot um, to actually make sure that it pushes the knee slightly higher and that front leg is, all, is always in front of the back leg um, in its position and that is to actually protect the groin at all costs. Um, so just nice simple kind of closer up image there as well. Then we can kind of um, twist the body back around or move the actual position of the knees around. Uh, knee kind of position when you're kneeling down, it's better to actually have um, knees apart. So there's a slight kind of gap in between the legs. Um, and at this point, we can either hide uh, the groin a little bit more with and without the uh, net in. Now, terminology in boudoir and kind of uh, photography is really down to you. You've got to actually find... Uh, what is correct. Um, I usually kind of refer to, okay, let's use the veil to cover over the boobs. They know exactly what I'm on about. If that is uh, not what you want to say, then find your terminology towards it anyway. Uh, my kind of dressing for success information that preparing for the session 
information refers to terminology as well so the client can actually get familiar with it and things so um, as far as um, in the nickel line is concerned if we need to actually hide more um, then obviously we can use more and more veiling uh, throughout the shoot but the the openness of the knee is important and try and not get them to sit back on the the feet so on the haunches as such try and get them to actually uh, sit upright or kneel upright because that's going to bring a lot more structure to the actual body itself hands uh, again we touched on the hands in the beginning you can see here what i mean about those middle fingers coming up towards the bra strap uh, it brings a nice side of the actual hand as well this is a good one for us to show off the engagement ring again it's in our kind of preparing for the session notes remember to bring your engagement ring in uh, etc but with this kind of shot here i i can show tiara necklace ring stockings uh, suspenders if they're wearing those as well we can actually show quite a lot of the wedding kind of look the difference being now is because um she's pretty much the light is at three o'clock to her and my position um is kind of moving more closer towards the light as you can see now hence the position of three o'clock she can actually look towards the light she can even look at camera position and we're going to get some great kind of detail and beautiful quality of light onto the face as well um but again from here we can just change this uh once more back around to actually the the backlight position and this is the first shot where we're actually into the sitting down this pose is almost impossible with shoes on so if you're planning to use shoes in some of your posing then um, kind of think how easy it is I tend to actually use the shoes when they're kind of laying down laying on their belly or laying on their back because then they're can be controlled trying to actually use the heels or shoes in a sat down pose is the most painful thing on the planet if if you're unaware of it try it yourself uh, and you'll realize it's almost impossible to do for for the majority of people uh, but from here um, you can see with this um, a shot I've basically gone to a profile it's not quite a profile in fact because we can see both knees so uh, again the body is turned a little bit but we can actually turn from the hip either closer towards camera so turn it in in this position in an anti-clockwise way or in a clockwise way towards the light uh, the light source to change the look uh, as well this is a really good pose to learn if um, your bride is braless as well because we can use both the back arm and hand to cover the boobs fully both boobs together or we can use the arm closest to camera to actually do the same thing by wrapping it across the body I tend to use the net in to hide the widest parts of the arm especially at the top here um, especially if there's a lot more flesh because we want to actually just disguise that a little bit more as a rule you'll find that one layer of netting is enough um, to actually disguise flesh um, more than two layers you pretty much actually have no detail of flesh or detail behind as well so if you're trying to show a little bit of the lawn uh, the laundry one layer of netting is enough allow the creases to naturally happen anyway it's it's a natural part of the image uh, and even let's say we were shooting this for a laundry company you can see that there's still full detail going through the net in here towards her as far as the um, arm position is concerned uh, where possible we want to actually show the beautiful shape of the figure or disguise the shape of the figure uh, a little bit um, na naturally um, for the majority of body shapes you're going to use the hands to just give a little bit of space behind the back but there are some bo uh, body shapes that you can move the arms further and further behind the back as it were like all, almost a wing like effect like you see in here and this can really exaggerate the actual arching of the back as well but again it's 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 all about suiting the actual body type so um as far as the detail shot is concerned i think when the client has got more of a uh, a thong knicker um you know just think about 
is this really the best shot for her when you're doing the photograph or you're doing it in the edit? Um, never be afraid of the hard crop. That's really what this image is about. Um, it could be a full length image, a three quarter image, a really tight image, whatever. But um, I would definitely try and crop in camera rather than actually relying on the likes of cropping in Photoshop um, because you'll you'll generate yourself a really nice flow. The session work a little bit quicker, which usually helps the, sub, uh, the subject relax a lot more if they know that things are being photographed often instead of basically a long time between photographs. So never be afraid to actually work in with the hard cropping because that can really, really change, change it, especially if you're trying to help the shape of the bottom more. Uh, it can work a lot better. Um, laying down, um, I mentioned about netting. Um, so not only are we using our veiling as a rule, this is the one shot, in fact, um, if she is laying down, we can actually use her veil uh, and basically a quick swap out of the comb, which usually most of the veils are on. Swapping out the comb, swapping it in with this one uh, will kind of move from, say, a, a studio uh, veil to a client's own veil. But as soon as we've done that shot, we take it back off again, hang it back, back up, of course, and then we're back in with the studio veiling and things, really. But from here, um, because the light, uh, the light in position, she's laying on them the belly, the one thing I encourage you to do is don't have much space between the boob and the bed because gravity can be a horrible thing uh, with boobs and you've just got to really make, make sure your job is to add a beautiful shape. And we put clients into such weird positions, we've got to accept at some stage, we've got to actually control the true animation of the body and the pose. Otherwise, it's just going to be an image that is thrown away. And, and I hate to throw away images because I come from the day of film and film used to cost us a lot of money. So make every shot count and things. Um, one way as well to stop the body feeling like it's just flat on the bed um, you know, you're not photographing a, a young child here. You're photographing a, a woman and you're trying to make her look sexier, which is really hard to do at times um, because of the nerves that are involved and so on. But if you just raise um, the part of the body, the hip, um, and the shoulder, uh, the shoulder away furthest to cam uh, the camera, there's almost a slight roll towards camera position and that will naturally add a, a kind of almost a pre-motion animation into the body. It can look really, really good. There's another tip as well. It's not visible in this photograph because we've got what I refer to as bunny rabbit ears going on as far as the feet are concerned, yeah? Um, but there's another way to actually make sure that this pose works and that is to move the furthest knee away from camera position, move it uh, to a bend position. That will naturally move the hip from a flat position up into a semi-raised position, and then she'll naturally lean across towards us. And of course, here you can go through a whole range of expressions and kind of viewpoints and everything else with it. Um, again, as far as cropping is concerned, be a little bit freer. Um, try and kind of absolutely get the photograph where, you know, you've got all hands that are beautiful and everything else with it, but go with the flow. Uh, bring energy in, in, into it. This could be the second time you're photographing this woman. You might have shot them as a pre-wedding couple, you know, when they first booked. Now, this is six to eight weeks before the wedding day. You know, you don't want her to make her feel uncomfortable. You want to actually build the buzz so she's so excited for the wedding day itself and things, really. Okay, uh, the classic kind of uh, boudoir kind of pose, uh, without a doubt. So this is where we're um, kind of rolled away from camera position. All the weight is on the one hip. In this case, the top knee is the one that is the balance leg. And you can see, even though it's cropped through, you can see the, shape, uh, the shaping that's going on. And the knee is really the balance point to stop her falling towards camera position. As far as the arm that is down by uh, the tummy, that is the one where possible we want to create this uh, bit of a gap between the waist and the actual arm. For the fuller figure, it's better the, to not try and create a gap there. It's better to almost disguise the gap because naturally you'll lose about two sizes from a figure. And um, with 
kind of women so comfortable in their own uh, body shape and everything else with it and things, we still want to look that little bit more sculpted the majority of the time and things. So again, that pre-discussion with the client, kind of that uh, success, you know, looking at kind of uh, images that you've done in the past, things that they really, really like, they'll talk about things perhaps that they really don't like about themselves and things that they really do like about themselves. You'll find that most people, in fact, talk more about what they don't like about themselves than what they do like. So remember to end that conversation uh, on basically what they do love about themselves and what their partner loves about them as well. So um, as far as the shape, uh, shaping of the bust, that's usually in a good control position now because um, a bra or a corset is 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 being used or basque, I should say. Um, if if not, if they're a, um, a a topless bride because of the dress, like we were chatting about before, then this is a really hard one to do. And in fact, you pretty much need to ignore this pose as you see it and you need to actually use the the hand that we were just discussing down by the belly um and you need to use that as the shape shaping and the hiding arm so kind of really controlling that together so across the boobs to hide the boobs to hide the nipple really uh, and then actually just pull in together just a little bit more will actually give you shape across the bust as well um otherwise gravity is 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 never a kind thing you know as a big guy <laughs> I know gravity isn't good when I take off my clothes. Um, so as far as the hand position is concerned, if no other photograph that you perfect this kind of beautiful hand position, it's the one that we're sho shooting here um, because it is absolutely a glorious kind of animation and it's going to work great as a, uh, a wedding photographer uh, or a portrait photographer. It really works well. And just getting that hand very, very close to the actual strap can really make the photograph itself and things. But this is a good way, again, to show off ring and all of the jewellery to do with it. It's really good to obviously show the kind of the stocking suspender if they wear, uh, they're wear wearing them, and obviously all of the lingerie. And we can get away with the bride's own veil at this stage as well. Don't forget to get in close. If you're going to get in close, move the hand from the strap bring it down towards the middle of the actual um, bra and actually work it from there and you'll find that you'll get a great close-up image as well. So now we're into the laying uh, kind of position, laying on the back um, and having a bit of fun. And this is definitely where um, I want to bring in the heels more because the wedding day shoes are a big part of it, especially with some of our really expensive uh, brides. You know, they spend huge amounts of money on everything. You need to actually shoot as much of the accessories. We have had brides in where they've actually got laundry for the wedding day. They've got laundry for the wedding night. Um, they've also asked to actually have their kind of what they're going to wear on the wedding night as well to actually be in the photographs. They've had it for a bikini that they're going to wear on their um, honeymoon as well. I mean, some of the sessions we've done have built up into quite a lot of things. And we, we were talking just about the basic accessory of what they're putting on, never mind the jewellery, the shoes, the hair, the clips, sarongs and everything else with it and things. So again, it's amazing once you start to actually really look at what um, bridal boudoir photography is about, it can actually really make itself into a very big session without any real work. And shoes are a big part of that. Here, um, I love this shot. It's really hard to get a client to do it. And it's not hard to get a client physically to do it, or the majority of them. It's hard to actually get them into the, the fun mode because we've been quite serious and sexy at this stage before. Now we need to get them into having a little bit of a kind of a laugh. Once more, this um, leg nearest to camera position should be the one that hides the groin. So in other words, that's going to be the furthest one back. But then you can kind of just get the uh, feet apart from each other. And just actually doing that two or three times will will kind of pretty much get the photograph for you without any trouble. But remember the expression as well. At the, this stage, though, we're definitely using studio veils because otherwise it's going to crease to hell. And, and we're, we're not even afraid to add extra netting on top of the bed before we actually get the bride on there with her veil on. 
from above um, is one of my favorite positions, to be honest. Um, it usually gives me a, a great, great image. It kind of shows everything at one. It's it's pleasing for most body shapes as well. For the slightly fuller figure, we would use the one arm to control the shape, control the boobs a little bit more as well if, if the bra wasn't very strong uh, in its control. Um, but we also want to actually use um, the arm to um, hide perhaps uh, one side of the body curve so we can just actually sculpt that body just a little bit more. Um, here, um, I chose it because it's a real shame because the, the, the leg closest to camera position should be higher and that leg, which is basically on top here now, but it's the furthest one away from camera position, um, should be lower down than the other. And in fact, you can see by it being in the same knee position, how the top leg actually looks bigger than the actual uh, leg closest to camera position. And that's just because the legs are being squashed together. If we'd move that foot out a little bit more, just about three or four inches from where it is now, you would have naturally sculpted those legs in a much, much better shape as well with it and things really. So as a rule, as I said, that top leg, push it out just that little bit more. Um, a little bit more like this kind of thing. So uh, again, um, now that we've got the full kind of shape um, with the heels on as well, um, I tend to actually work away from the pillow end and instead uh, kind of the feet are being used up near the pillows. I find it a lot, easy, a lot easier to use the pillows to position where the feet are going to be posed ra uh, rather than trying to al almost have a fake kind of position of the feet uh, if the head was up near the pillow end and things really. So don't, so don't be afraid to actually pull it around. Arm across the tummy uh, is a great control of uh, a bust shape, as you can see from here as well. And just this hand closest to camera position is back with the two middle fingers kind of touching the th thumb, and they're the ones that actually have the animation. Stood up, uh, windows or war or wardrobes, whatever you were. Um, we were lucky in Studio One in the old church um, that we could basically do the full length images here in the church and things. Um, but as a rule of thumb, as long as you get near a window, you turn the body slightly away from the window. You have that foot that is closest to camera position slightly in front and, and bent that knee. You pretty much can get this photograph anywhere, any position. And um, it's great. You can go straight in for the close-up as well. The only difference here from other images that we've seen before really, uh, really is the uh, arm closest to camera position is now just at the top of the leg. Uh, and it's just with the finger touch rather than a hand kind of pressed into it. But you can see by turning that body away from the light source, how you have some incredible detail on the lingerie as well. If you are going to do the stood up, which I recommend, especially on the wedding day, like I said right, right at the beginning, uh, this is a really great image to do. Um, and uh, for a shy bride, um, and let's face it, it takes, uh, you know, some real kind of uh, courage to kind of do some laundry photography on the biggest day of their lives. Uh, and sometimes, in fact, it's a, an icebreaker as well for them. It's kind of, oh my God, that's the worst of, or, of it, or I've been dreading that part, Mark. I've got it done. Oh my God, I feel brilliantly. Kind of, and these are the times where I actually will show the bride a few photographs on the back of the camera as well to really boost their images. But as a rule of thumb, if I'm going to show a client a shot on the back of the camera, it tends to be a distant image rather than a close-up because there's no retouching, no liquefy or no softening being done at that point. So better to give the shape. Just be careful with the foot position that you don't take the heel too high up because it can look very, very angled and a bit kind of um, strange uh, and too strong at times in its kind of position. So uh, around about just through the calf level is usually a safe position, but you definitely want to avoid it above the knee because that, that will give you too much of an angle. Uh, we'll see an image in a minute where that kind of ha happens as well. At this point, try and get the arms out towards the sides just to kind of um, show off all of the actual lingerie. Um, but again, if you're trying to body shape, use m multiple layers of the net, uh, the net in to either disguise or to actually hide. 
If you can go to a slight squat uh, position at this stage, it's a quick second shot. You can, um, of course, move from the profile position like we just saw with the stood up, um, and then we can actually move to the squat position. I, I would tend to do uh, the, the full position first, the full length position, slightly close, closer, then move to this camera angle, do the same shot with the full length like you see in here, yeah, um, and then go into the squat, then go actually into the side squat for, uh, position to finish off with. Um, but again, um, not everybody can do this pose. It's easier on a chair, in fact. Uh, you can see what I mean here about the um, uh, the heel position. If it's in the knee, at the height of the knee, I should say, you can see how the angle of the leg is just a little bit too full on. So just try and actually drop that heel down a little bit more. Um, even when I'm in a controlled environment like I am here, shooting for the Academy, um, kind of a, it's a lovely video and everything else with it. But really, really what we're uh, trying to uh, create is variety for you to see as well. And, and even I make mistakes, even though I'm going into a set idea with a set pattern, I might have shot it a hundred times, you know, there's distractions and other things. And if you're trying to do this on the way of wedding day, time is your biggest distraction, which is just that bit of a shame. Okay, so the hand here, the back of the hand is against the robe and it's pushing the veil in away. Remember, this could be the bride's own veil at this point without any issues. Uh, and you can kind of get some uh, shots here, not worry about the crease in. Sitting image uh, is a definite. I prefer the profile like we're seeing here. It doesn't mean that I won't shoot the kind of the full on um, position like we just saw in the last photograph as well. So when the light is at the 12 at uh, the 12 o'clock, you get this lovely kind of backlight effect compared to when the lighting is at the three o'clock or four o'clock positions and things really. But both of these images are a good one to do. I tend to do the profile image first, then try and um, move position to get the foot up a little higher as if she's going to put it on or attach the back of the um, uh, the strap to the back of the shoe or do up a buckle. Remember, you don't have to get to the full positioning of doing up the buckle to make it look like it's a an image in the making rather than the finished kind of uh, fake doing up of the buckle and things really. As a rule, you'll definitely be able to shoot from one side to another. So this shot that we just saw here against the robe, all I've done is move the client 180 degrees now and all I've had to do is spin in the middle, and basically I've got a different background as well. Um, here though, it's using the veiling fully across the body, two layers of netting. Now, remember I was saying at the beginning that more than one layer, you start to actually disguise almost all flesh and take off the, high, uh, the highlight as well. Two layers will basically start to disguise a lot of the actual de uh, detailing on the lingerie as well. But what I like this image for, it kind of brings that true kind of um, bridal feel a feeling with the veiling across the face and everything else. And if we just cropped in closer and closer and closer, so you're all almost completely above the bus with the shot, it would still be a really great image no matter what. And then uh, laying down, as I was saying to you, my favorite um, kind of thing, this is one of our flower carpets that basically we get the um, uh, clients to lay down on. Look at the knee position on the front leg, how it crosses and kind of hides the groin a little bit, a bit, bit more. If you've ever shot uh, nude, implied nude and so on, you know exactly uh, this kind of pose is, is a really good um, animation to disguise the groin. Uh, as far as the hands are concerned, <laughs> I try and bring some animation to the, to them. Otherwise, it can look like, you know, the dead bride. Um, and I, I know it's a kind of love-hate relationship with so many photographers. Um, but basically, as long as I can bring the animation to the hand with the strap, we can bring a little bit of animation with the hand to the net, uh, the net in, uh, even with the eyes closed. I hope that we're disguising it a little bit, that it doesn't look like, you know, the dead bride, as it were. From the head position, the classic kind of bud, boudoir, really easy to finish off the ses session with. 
uh, or even start your session if that's what you need. Um, I would say that if you're doing this shot and you definitely want to do the laying down with the bride um, on the day and you want to use her veil, then this is an image you can get away with as long as she is not leaning on it. If she starts to lay on it, she's going to freak out like most pe people would do because they've taken you know, years in the making of this day, it doesn't want to be spoilt um, in seconds because as the photographer, you haven't thought about the creasing of the net, uh, the netting. But again, you know, um, a slight turning of the hip away from the light, the, the light source, that top leg, that knee kind of coming over the top again, like we discussed in a, another Im image, this hand coming up towards the bra strap, the other hand bringing some net, some net in and bringing down towards the actual top of the leg. You know, it's a very simple image. And if you're a boudoir photographer and you don't often, uh, sorry, you don't offer bridal boudoir sessions, I, I think you're missing out on a trick, to be honest. And if you're a um, wedding photographer, especially if you're a female wedding photographer and you're not doing any lingerie shots at all, I think it's a little bit of a shame and you're missing out some really power powerful images. So in the posing ideas for you, Remember, on the day, start with a, stand, a standing more than anything else and then go to perhaps a sit, sitting shot. Um, only do a laying shot if um, you've got either a different veil or you're going to use the veil on top of her um, in any form of laying down. But as far as the um, bridal boudoir photography se session, six to eight weeks before the wed wedding day, all you've got to do is actually have some kind of studio veils. And if you have a word with your local wedding shops, they'll usually have some uh, veiling that they're selling off cheap because they've got creased and they can't get them out or they're out of styling and so on with it. Um, but, don't, but don't be afraid to go down to the material shop and buy a load of netting to go over the top of the bed as well. Hope you enjoyed this film.